Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I have a really, really interesting video for you today because we are going to be checking out the performance difference of a slim 120mm fan to a full height 120mm fan. Now, what the heck is a slim fan? I hear you ask, but it's basically one of these. Uh, this is my favourite slim fan out there at the moment. It's the Silverstone AR120 RGB and as you can see, it is a lot thinner than the standard fan on my left, your right. So, this one is 15 millimeters thick, this one is 25 millimeters thick, and that is a real advantage when it comes to a lot of mini ICX systems out there because you can fit these in spaces that you just can't fit those ones. You can also fit these to radiators and take up a lot less space than you would using one of these fans. And if you use a slim radiator as well, you're looking at just 20 millimeters for the radiator, 15 millimeters for the slim fan. You've got a full fan and radiator set up in just 35 millimeters. And I've used these slim fans in lots of cases over the last few years where I've managed to water cool them in situations that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to be water cooled. So they are super, super useful for the small form factor, mini ITX PCs for just cramming a lot, more, a lot more cooling into those very, very tight spaces. Now, everything else being equal, a slim fan is always gonna perform worse than a standard height fan. The blades are thinner, they're gonna to have to spin up probably uh, more to hit the same airflow, there's gonna be less static pressure, etc., etc. Now, the question I wanna to answer today is just how much performance you are losing from using a slim fan compared to a standard height fan. So we're gonna, we're gonna be answering some very, very interesting questions such as do you need to spin these things louder and faster to hit the same airflow? Are you having to uh, deal with more noise to generate the same airflow? So we're gonna have a whole bunch of testing done there. Do these things see a drop in CPU temperature if you fit them to a radiator, even at the same speeds and the same noise levels? So some very, very interesting questions we've got to ask. And the last one is uh, one that I'm gonna find particularly interesting, which is, is it better to use a slim fan and a full height radiator or a slim radiator and a full height fan? Now that's a really interesting question because both of those two setups are 45 millimeters thick. A slim fan, 15 mil, slim uh, full height radiator, 30 mil, 45 millimeters. Standard fan, 25 millimeters, slim radiator, 20 millimeters, 40 millimeters. So is bigger fan and bigger airflow more important than bigger radiator is the question that we're gonna be asking there. So that's another super interesting investigation that we'll be doing later in this video. We'll be using my standard fan test system which measures airflow and we've got it strapped up to a water cooling system as well so we can take see how both of these fans perform in a real live water cooling loop. And the fans that we're gonna be using, as I've already mentioned, is the Silverstone Air Slimmer 120 RGB. This is my favorite slim fan out there right now and it won my recent group test of slim fans which you can see in the banner up above or a link in the description down below. The other fans that we're going to be testing it against are obviously normal fans. This is the Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 High Speed. This actually won a recent group test of 120mm fans I did for another publication. So I know that this fan is right up there, probably in the top three or top five uh, uh, 120mm fans out there right now. We also have the Daddy, the Fantex T30. This thing is actually 30mm thick. It's 5mm thick, thicker than a standard fan. And that means that hopefully there's going to be more static pressure and potentially more airflow for less noise. So the reason, main reason I wanted to include this fan is it is actually becoming increasingly popular in mini ITX systems as well for, for those reasons. The fact that if you've got a single fan mount with a reasonable amount of clearance, it's usually better to have the very best cooling that you have on offer, especially if you have just one radiator cooling a whole bunch of hardware, you want to, you want to make the most of it, and that is probably done best with this fan. So we're gonna be comparing all three of these fans together in a liquid cooling loop. We're gonna be checking out the airflow, the noise, and at the end, we're gonna be seeing that comparison between a thick, a normal size radiator and a slim radiator and the different size fans and seeing how those setups compare. That's it from the intro here today and all the only thing that I would like to ask you is to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. It means a lot to have your support and also like and comment on this video as well. It just helps punch me up the algorithm and I'd like to keep the traction that we've got here going on the channel at the moment uh, going because we've got some real growth in subscriber numbers and views as well, which is great news. So that's it from the intro. We'll be back at the conclusion at the end to hopefully make some summary and uh, to kind of boil things down in a less complicated manner than all the thousands of graphs that we're going to be looking at in a minute. 
So first up, we have the airflow results. So we have a couple of results here for the Fantex T30 because it has a couple of different modes that you can use. So the standard mode can go up to 2000 RPM. And if you want absolute ear splitting noise, then you can go for the uh, extreme mode, which has a peak speed of 3000 RPM. But I wouldn't suggest anybody really uses that unless you're in an absolutely desperate scenario with one fan mount in your case and it's melting or something. Um, so I've included both results just in case you wanted to opt for that maximum speed for some kind of reason. And obviously it is the technical uh, full speed of that fan. So we have the Silverstone, uh, unfortunately sitting at the bottom of the graph at full speed. And it's not really surprising because both of the other fans can spin at much higher RPMs. So uh, not surprising to see uh, the Fantex offering a, uh, a fair deal amount more airflow at its uh, full speed of 2000 RPM, but the Silverstone not really doing too badly considering, considering it is a slim fan and it's spinning a little bit slower at 1800 RPM. Now things were a little bit closer at 1500 RPM. We've got 1.32 meters, meters a second airflow through the uh, anemometer and uh, we have just 1.35 meters a second airflow with the be quiet and that's both at 1500 rpm so the silverstone not really losing out a whole load at that speed now a really surprising result was that the silverstone actually beat the be quiet albeit not by much in the 1000 rpm airflow test now i ran this test several times um just making sure that the anemometer was reading the maximum reading coming out the radiator and also double check the rpms of both fans they were both running at 1000 rpm and amazingly, the Silverstone actually managed to beat the full height Be Quiet fan at this speed. So that's a very, very interesting result. Overall, though, it has to be said that the full height fans and the Fantex, which is a, a little bit thicker, do generally perform better uh, once they start spinning up than a slim fan. And I can pretty much say that's across the board because the Silverstone is pretty much the best slim fan that I have tested so far. So moving on to the noise results now then, and uh, the top graph is full speed noise. So this is kind of a pointless graph because all the fans are spinning at different speeds because they have different maximum speeds. So you're going to get different noise levels, but if, I just thought it'd be interesting to include it. So we do have the Silverstone uh, at 59 dBA. And that's kind of a kind of <laughs> unremarkable result on its own. But at 1800 RPM, it's only just 200 RPM behind the Fantex T30, but that produces a lot more noise. So that's kind of an interesting result. More interesting, though, is probably a result that we expected at a fixed RPM, the thicker fans did produce less noise. For example, the Silverstone at 1500 RPM, 55 dBA, the loudest fan um, out of the three, but the Fantex not that far behind. Again, though, the standard uh, Be Quiet fan uh, producing 49 dBA, which was noticeably quieter than the Silverstone. And it's a similar result at 1000 RPM, this time the Fantex producing slightly less noise than the Be Quiet and the Be Quiet just 1 dBA behind the Silverstone. But it is pretty clear that if you want uh, the most airflow for the least noise, um, slim fans shouldn't be your priority if you have the option not to use them. So moving on to the CPU temperature and the test system uses a uh, slim radiator, a slim 120 millimeter radiator connected to a custom liquid loop. And these are real world results. So if you strap a, all these different fans to your uh, liquid cooling system, you will probably see similar results to these. So we've actually got some differences here between the fans, which is really interesting to see. So at full speed, obviously no surprise there seeing the Silverstone at the bottom of the pack because it has the lowest RPMs. Now moving down to 1500 RPM, so everything equal that could be equal between the fans, we do have a difference between the Silverstone and the thicker fans on test, and the same goes for 1000 RPM. So this is really interesting because I thought that the slim fans would be able to kind of um, offer peak efficiency with a slim radiator, but it's pretty clear here that the added airflow and static pressure produced by the thicker fans means they are still able to produce a higher efficiency, even on a, a very thin, unrestricted radiator. So kind of um, doesn't bode well for using slim fans on thicker radiators because you're going to lose even more efficiency as the, um, the thicker fans have even more restriction. So just worth bearing in mind that with these, uh, these kind of fans, it's going to be worth 
sticking to either slim radiators or at most 30 millimeter thick radiators you definitely don't, don't want to go any thicker than that and uh, also if you're using a slim um, a slim radiator and you have the option of using a thicker fan then it's probably going to be worth your while using one now we're moving on to the noise normalized tests, which are probably the most important if noise is important to you because it's basically showing you how much performance or airflow you get at a specific noise level. So this is basically um, looking at the fan's performance to noise ratio. So what we've got here is not a great result for the Silverstone and Slim fans in general because kind of as expected, you're having to um, cut back the RPMs to meet the same noise level as the other two larger fans. But that's not really to be unexpected here. So um, we're kind of expecting the uh, the slim fans to not offer a great noise to performance ratio because they're slimmer, they produce less static pressure, etc. etc. So here we could actually ramp up the Fantex T30 to 1650 RPM, 150 RPM higher than the Silverstone slim fan at the same noise level and the be quiet went even further it managed to get up to 1700 rpm and produced a whole lot more airflow as a result so if you do have the space for a standard height fan and it's a good one then it is again definitely going to be the best option for you over a slim fan if you have the option of actually doing so of course now our final test is combining slim fans and standard fans with slim radiators and standard radiators so the kind of really interesting thing here is as i mentioned earlier is that if you've got a standard fan and a slim radiator that is 45 millimeters thick a slim fan and a standard 30 millimeter thick radiator is also 45 millimeters thick so if you have that space or thereabouts free in your case which option should you use so what we've got here is um, basically a noise normalized result of 50 dba and we have a speed normalized result at 1500 rpm and in both situations it's not much but it is noticeable in both situations it is better to have a standard fan generating more airflow and more static pressure with a slim radiator than it is to have a bigger radiator, a thicker radiator, and a slim fan. And I can say this pretty much unequivocally because the slim fan that we're using here is the Silverstone, which is pretty much the best performing slim fan out there on the market. And we have a pretty decent standard fan as well. Now, if you're using a pretty poor 120 millimeter fan, it might well kind of level, uh, level things up. But if you're using a decent fan, then you're probably going to see similar results to we've got here. So the overall conclusion here is that you should be using a standard fan and a slim radiator if you have around 45 millimeters of clearance to play with. Obviously, if you have the space, a standard radiator is going to gener generate um, a bit more cooling capacity. So that would be my preference, a standard fan and a, a 30 millimeter radiator. But pretty interesting result nonetheless. So what do we make of all that testing then? Well, it's been pretty interesting. I think the one thing that I was quite surprised with was in the custom loop that the slim fan really kept pace with the thicker fans in the system and also there wasn't that much difference in terms of airflow in a lot of situations between the slim fan and the four height fans now it should be noted that this is the very best slim fan that i have tested a lot of the other ones do not perform anywhere near as well as the silverstone air slimmer 120 rgb that we've got here so if you do have some of the other fans you will potentially be seeing much more of a drop off in performance but whether it's airflow or airflow to noise ratios or just how well it's dealing with your radiator in your custom liquid loop. That's kind of interesting. Another interesting point is that the uh, the thicker radiator you go for, the probably the less well that this thing is going to perform. For example, we saw a slightly better result with the uh, more powerful fan than we did with the thicker radiator. So it's clear that you got if fair enough if you want to go for a thicker radiator but you've got to have the airflow and the static pressure to pressure to punch through it and to actually make that radiator perform as efficiently as possible and that's probably not going to happen if you pair a slim fan with a radiator that's thicker than 30 millimeters it's just not going to have the oomph to actually get that airflow through the radiator in an efficient manner so not that you would probably be pairing a slim fan with a 60 millimeter thick radiator anyway, but it's just worth mentioning that just in case you were considering doing that. I would probably also avoid a slim radiator with a 45 millimeter thick fan as a uh, thick 
I would also avoid a slim fan with a 45 millimeter thick radiator as well. So all in all, I am still gonna continue using slim fans. I don't think there's anything really that I've seen today that's gonna to make me think, oh, you know, these things are absolutely terrible and um, I'm not really gonna use them. I just don't think there's that much of a performance difference between them. Obviously, if you have the choice between one or the other, it's a standard height fan or something beefier like the Fantax T30 any day of the week because you will see better performance in a whole range of situations. You're going to get more airflow for less noise. You're going to get better performance on a custom liquid loop on a radiator, any even a even a relatively slim radiator as well. You will still see slightly better performance with a thicker fan. Now, what is also true is that the Silverstone Air Slimmer is probably going to beat a whole bunch of standard height fans out there as well. That's just how great this fan is. So as long as you're pairing a very good slim fan and not just one that you've heard about on YouTube or Reddit or something as someone's used in a build and they've said, oh yeah, this fan is great, it produces lots of air. Yeah, uh, compared to what? Um, <laughs> you've got to do the testing, you've got to find out whether these things are worth it or not, and you've got to check the airflow numbers, which again, we have in our recent group test of slim fans here on the channel. Don't just look at people that have used these in systems, don't just check people that have used this and maybe one other fan, you've got to do the testing and that's what we do here on Crazy Tech Lab. So, Thanks for watching today. I hope this, inf this information has been useful and you found this video uh, enjoyable today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and more importantly, subscribe to my channel and you will be notified of new videos as well if you click that notification button. Loads, new va news loads of new reviews coming to the channel very soon, including a whole load more slim 120mm fans. Is there going to be one that beats the Silverstone? We would find out very, very soon. We also have a 140mm slim fan group test coming up as well that one I am really looking forward to. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will catch you soon.